Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome. Today we'll be talking about passion and the importance of following your dreams. Many people ask me about the keys to success, and I have to say that one of the biggest keys is to figure out what you're the most passionate about and then find people that are successful in that field using them as a model or mentor. This saves a lot of time in one's career. Uh, today we'll be looking in on a rare interview with someone who lives his life by following his passions. Renowned actor, choreographer, producer, and director, David Winters is on the show. What an amazing guy. He's had such an amazing career. During his illustrious career, David has worked with countless show business icons, uh, from Paul Newman to Barbara Streisand to Michael Jackson and Elvis. You'll be amazed by the stories he shares and the life he's led. Stick with us. We have an amazing show. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Come experience Nolan's. Savor award-winning steaks, Greek-style cuisine, fresh local seafood, and an extensive choice of wines. Whether you'd like to reserve the large private dining room, enjoy a meal on an outdoor deck, or rock the night away in our lounge, Nolan's now celebrating 25 years of exceeding your expectations for casual fine dining, live entertainment, and dancing nightly. Real estate today offers incredible opportunities, low prices and extremely low interest rates. Hi, I'm Amy Norris from Amy Sells the Beach. Right now, there are opportunities in all areas. Our team can help you put your money to work finding your dream or investment property. And if you're looking to sell, no one can give you better exposure to buyers and make your property stand out. Experience matters when looking for opportunity. I'm Amy Norris. See why we're number one at amysellsthebeach.com. Many people remember my guest tonight, David Winters, from his world-renowned work as a choreographer or as one of the lead roles in the classic 1961 film, West Side Story, starring Natalie Wood. It's been over 50 years, if you can believe that, and David just wrapped his latest film, East Side Story, which is due out next year. I had a chance to catch up with David briefly and discuss his passions along with his life and long career. Let's take a look at it now with me and director David Winters. Well, David, thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your busy schedule to be able to sit down with us. Uh, and obviously you've had such a far reaching career in show business. Um, everything from uh, course acting, directing, choreography. But uh, tell us a little bit about where you're from and how, how it all started. Um, I'm from London, England. I was born in London, England. And came to America as a very young boy. We actually came to Canada first, then came to America and uh, just always knew that I had to be a dancer. Uh, my mom, who was a dancer from when she was 15 till she was 88 when she right. passed away, she said I used to dance when I was two years old. And she never taught me anything. She said, David, you dance when you were two years old and your, your talent is God-given, basically. Um, but I went to an audition as a, as a boy actor, got lots of jobs in New York, mm -hmm. did 150 television shows as an actor by the time I was 17. Wow. Um, and then I got West Side Story, uh, the Broadway show, and that changed my life. Well, and obviously it was such a huge, even to this day, such a huge iconic film. And I mean, what was it like being 17, you get this, this role now in West Side Story. I mean, how did it really affect uh, your life? Did you know when you got this role, it, this is, I'm on my way now? Yes, we all, we all knew that it was something very special and very unique, a very unique production. Uh, the idea of doing a musical about two gangs yeah. based on Shakespeare with the kind of talent, Jerome Robbins, Leonard Bernstein. Stephen Sondheim was a young man at the time. Right. You know, Arthur Lorenz. Well, we knew that it was something very special. Um, what we didn't know is what the reception would be. We didn't know how the audiences would take to sure. it. But of course, the music was sensational. The dancing was even more sensational. And it was a smash hit. And we all knew that it was great to be part of something that was yeah, so iconic. magical. It was magical. Well, and I, I, we had talked a little bit uh, backstage. We, we were talking about um, Natalie Wood. And uh, my mother growing up, everybody likened her to Natalie Wood. And uh, she'd go out, people would buy her drinks because they looked 
uh, very much alike. And because of that, we, we've become, even as a child, big Natalie Wood fans. What was it like working with, with her? She was a doll. She was a big star. You know, even she started when she was a little girl, yeah. no, a very, very young girl. But nothing changed her. Natalie was just Nat. We called her Nat. And she was a sweetie. She, she was so humble, very, very humble, and uh, just a real lovely, lovely person. Lovely, lovely person. And I know you guys would even get together, sing together. Uh, of course, yes. you knew her husband, uh, Robert Wagner. Robert Wagner, lovely guy, terrific guy, yes. And uh, we would sometimes meet in Las Vegas and sit around the piano and sing songs from West Side Story at the Mirage Hotel. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, obviously you've had this amazing acting career, uh, producing and, and uh, you know, choreography and everything. But I, I have to say, me and my wife, we're, we're huge uh, Simon and Garfunkel fans, and we, we love Paul Simon. Right. And I know that you did, uh, at a period of time, you did work with him as a duet. Uh, yes. Talk a little bit about what that was well, like. Well, uh, Paul had an act with Artie Garfunkel uh -huh. called Tom and Jerry, and they had a one hit in New York City. Hey, school girl in the second row, teacher's looking over, so you got to whisper way down low. Can't, right. I can't believe I still remember the lyrics. <laughs> Anyhow, so they split up, and, and Paul and I got together, and we formed a group uh, when I was in West Side Story called David Winters and the West Siders, and Paul wrote some songs with me. We wrote songs together, and we recorded them. Uh, Teddy Randazzo, who was a big movie star at the time, was our producer. Uh, and um, so anyhow, we did these crazy songs. We wrote songs like Sloppy Lizzie from the Black Lagoon, just weird teenage <laughs> kind of commercial stuff. And then nothing happened with it, really. We went and did some shows, and we did some recordings, and, wow. you know, it was signed for a recording contract and stuff. But I got to really get happened. my hands on some of that early stuff. It, it's on in the Internet. You can oh, buy it on the Internet to, to this to. day. But uh, <laughs> anyhow, so then Paul left and went to Europe, where Artie was. They got together, and unbeknownst to me, I was doing a show called Hullabaloo at the time. Mm -hmm. And I walked into rehearsal one day, and I hear someone say, David, and I turned around, and it's Paul, and it's Artie. And I said, what are you guys doing here? Right. They said, we're on the show. And I said, you're on this show? <laughs> what group are you with? And they said, Simon and Garfunkel. Oh, and I wow. went, oh, my God, I never put the two things together. Right. I just saw there was a Simon and Garfunkel act. I didn't realize it was Paul and Artie. And they said they went to Europe. They started to write things from the heart, not things that were commercial. Right. And a, uh, a DJ in Germany took ho one of their songs. It was either Bridge Over Troubled Water or one of those kind of songs, and played it. It became a, a regional hit. Then it became a European hit. And then it became an American hit. Mm. And so that's when they were on that Do you course. still keep in touch at all? I haven't seen them in a long, long time. Yeah. But, you know, they had this concert in London. At Hyde Park, a million people showed up. Wow. One million people showed up. What an influence he's had. Yeah, fantastic. Really. And, and at a point, obviously, you came a, a more away from the acting to focus more on uh, your choreography and producing and directing. Yes. What prompted that shift to really... I always wanted to do that, actually, when I was an actor. That was your first love. Yes. Uh, all the other actors would go and take breaks for lunch. I didn't take a lunch break. I used to sit in the booth, and I used to say to my mom, Mom, she said, I know it's lunchtime. I want to watch the director. I want to watch what the producer does. Mm -hmm. I want to watch what the writer does. So I was watching and learning all the time. And I would just sit in the back of the, of the control booth, the control booth, and just watch what everybody did, you know? Well, and I hear today on so many <clears throat> interviews where you'll hear these uh, actors and they'll say, well, what was it like? We're, you know, it's just a job like anything else. I just do this for a job. And I, I, I don't like hearing that because yes. it, it, it's not a passion. And, and for people that are passionate about what they do, yes. such as yourself, yes. we know that it's, uh, you know, it, it's not a job. It's what you do. In your spare your time, life. you're researching. It's your it, life. It's your life. It's your life. My, my work is my life. That's the truth. Well, and you've certainly had a great life. Your immense career in television, uh, of course, uh, as a choreographer, you worked with many, many uh, amazing people. Yes. But uh, you did choreograph four uh, Elvis movies. What was it like uh, working with Elvis? And just generally being in Hollywood at that time was just um, such an iconic time. He gave me my first break, basically, when he approved me for Viva Las Vegas. 
That was my first movie with Elvis. And from then, I never really stopped working, to tell you the truth, mm. because I was Anne's choreographer, Anne Margaret, mm -hmm. and she actually got Lovely me that lady. job. Yeah. She's a wonderful person. She got me that job, and I was probably the only one who knew about the romance at the time, because nobody knew about their romance, which was a, you know, kind of kept very secretive. Um, and then I did uh, Girl Happy with him. I did Tickle Me, and I did Easy Come, Easy Go with Elvis. Um, I would like to talk to you about Michael Jackson, because I, I spent some time, I, I did all of Dino Ross's shows for three years. I did all of his stage shows or television right. specials. And Michael came on and she said to me, David, this is Michael Jackson. So I went to put my hand out. So Michael said, no, 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 I know you. I said, Michael, we've never met. I'm sure if I met Michael Jackson, I would remember. So he went like this. So I knew West Side Story, of course. Yes. He said, David, I watch you every week. It's my favorite movie. Oh. I know you. Don't worry about it. So he and I <laughs> clicked, and we became friends till he died. But I want to tell you that I spent an, a week with him in Romania on tour with him. With Michael. With Michael, mm -hmm. just as a friend. Mm -hmm. and, and also in uh, Holland, I spent a week with him. I saw Michael give away literally $10 million to children's charities wow. in one week when I was with him, anonymously, anonymously. That's really giving. That's the difference. It didn't say given by Michael Jackson. Sure, publicity he, stunt. Exactly. He made sure, we used to go to the hospitals every day. We go to two hospitals a day. When we get to the new city, he would walk along the floor to the kids, sign all the autographs, take all the pictures. They were stunned. Right. They didn't even know he was coming. And he went to the incurable disease for children, the, the section for the, for the incurable the children had incurable diseases, and he made their lives better. And he went to the nurse. We would walk away from the main people in the, in the hospital. He'd say, what can help these kids live longer? What can make their lives better? Tell me what you need. And the secretary with us would write down. Now, he did this every day, and he had us a show at night, two shows at night. And he didn't even check into the hotel yet. Wow. So we check into the hotel at 3 o'clock. At 4.30, he has to leave to go to, the, to do the show. Okay? So we finally check in. The first thing he does is he gets on the telephone, gets his people, wherever they were, sure. and says, take this order and make sure you buy it and do not tell anybody who bought it. Wow. That is really giving. Ten million dollars in one week. I well, and today you see so many people give and it's very strategic. Yes. Uh, what, you know, yes. they're giving this to and all that. Yes. But what, no. Well, and... There's actually a, an actor dancer that lives in the area that we've had on our show as well. And everybody I've ever spoken with that's met Michael that just says that he was such a, a genuine, soft spoken person that just had a, a real sincere yes. interest in, in the person Absolutely. he was talking to. Yes. I, yeah. I recently saw a, a documentary on him and that uh, uh, said that when he would work, when he would dance, a lot of the professional dancers were there, his choreographers. and. And within just, you know, a, a couple of days, he was making it his own. He was even teaching them. He was such a great uh, dancer yes. with a natural ability. With a natural. Was Elvis much like that? or uh, Not really, no. <laughs> Elvis uh, had his own style and his own movement. Yep. And uh, so it was a matter of finding things that worked for Elvis. Sure. Elvis was uh, really a singer, yeah. a real singer, a fantastic singer. And also a very beautiful person, by oh. the way. Very down to earth, very simple, the most humble person I ever met in my life. Wow. Elvis Presley, absolutely humble. But uh, <clears throat> in terms of the dancing, because Annie, like on the first picture, Anne Margaret was a dancer and I had sure. you know, taught her, so I had certain moves that I wanted to do, but when I gave them to Elvis, it was a little awkward for him. So I had to adjust them. I had to always adjust things for Elvis. Make him look like he could actually keep up with Anne, being a professional. Yeah, and he, it worked fine in the movies. Yeah, sure. And obviously, I became his choreographer, and we made four, make, four pictures together, and we became great buddies. Well, and I know others have said the same thing about uh, Elvis being such a, a, a humble person. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Kurt Russell, he said that that really uh, affected his career, meeting him on a, on a young set. I don't remember the movie. Uh -huh. And he had a short interaction with Elvis, and that really... He said, that's it, I know what I want to do, Yeah. Uh, based on that Yeah, interaction. he was a lovely, lovely, he was also very giving. If you said you liked something, he'd give you the keys to his car, you know? Sure. I once told him I liked the ring, he gave me the ring. I said, Elvis, I don't want the ring, I'm just yeah. telling you I like it. He said, no, 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 you like it, it's yours, David. 
and he made me take it. <laughs> well, and you've, you've been a part of so many things and you, obviously so many productions. I think I read, if it's correct, uh, over 400 television, yes. uh, over 50 films yes. uh, that you've uh, produced or directed. Yes. And um, through all of that, how has the business uh, of making movies and film and TV changed over the years? Obviously, you've been a part of it for many decades, but has it changed much? Uh, it's changed in the sense that technically it's uh, much easier now. Almost anybody can make a film today with the cameras yeah. we have, the digital cameras. They're this big. In fact, I just I made a movie that just won Sundance last year, and it won France. It's a picture I, I co-star in. I, it's not my movie. I'm just an actor in it. But when I went on the set and I had these little cameras, I said, are we, are we shooting these pictures in stills? What are we doing? Because yeah. they have these little still cameras. <laughs> They said, David, this is what the technology this is the today. Yeah. This is the camera. I said, what? Yeah. So, and that's what we're using now in yeah. Inside Story. We're using these tiny little digital cameras, right. and they're fantastic. Well, they don't need a lot of light, you right. know? So it, the whole process now, the cranes, we don't have the big cranes we used to have. The, the years ago, when we had those Mitchell 35 sure. cameras, they were this big. I mean, they were huge. To ship them at a time. To ship them anywhere yeah. was a nightmare, yeah. a nightmare. And well, because expensive. of the advances of technology, like you said, anybody can <clears throat> make a movie, uh, but unfortunately, not everybody's supposed to be. And, uh, you know, I think that it's been good for the market, but also bad because there's so much stuff out there now. There's yes, really a there sea of a work lot. that you have yeah, to kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. really navigate through to find yeah. quality work. Yeah. But you're one of the guys that's supposed to be doing it, obviously, and you've been doing it uh, right for many years. Thank uh, you. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, I want to talk to you a little bit about a picture I found on the internet with you and Paul Newman. Sure. And find out what in the world was going on there. But uh, don't go, okay. don't touch that dial. We'll be right back tomorrow with David Winters when we come back. Come experience Nolan's. Savor award-winning steaks, Greek-style cuisine, fresh local seafood, and an extensive choice of wines. Whether you'd like to reserve the large private dining room Enjoy a meal on an outdoor deck or rock the night away in our lounge. Nolan's now celebrating 25 years of exceeding your expectations for casual fine dining, live entertainment, and dancing nightly. Real estate today offers incredible opportunities, low prices and extremely low interest rates. Hi, I'm Amy Norris from Amy Sells the Beach. Right now, there are opportunities in all areas. Our team can help you put your money to work finding your dream or investment property. And if you're looking to sell, no one can give you better exposure to buyers and make your property stand out. Experience matters when looking for opportunity. I'm Amy Norris. See why we're number one at amysellsthebeach.com. When visiting Gulf Shores, Alabama, make sure to visit the Gulf Coast Zoo, home of the little zoo that could from Animal Planet. Get up close in our petting zoo. Enjoy our unique animal encounters. More than 300 monkeys, bears, reptiles, big cats, parrots, and more call a Gulf Coast home. Come on, go wild at the Alabama Gulf Coast Zoo. One of the stories that David Winters shared with me off camera was of his very close and personal friendship with James Dean. Uh, Dean had a very profound effect and influence over David's career. And if you look back at some of David's earlier work, you can see this even in his appearance. In fact, once Dean actually recommended his favorite book, The Little Prince by French author Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, which become one of David Winters' favorites also. To this day, when David revisits that body of work, he's nearly brought the tears in remembrance of his dear friend. Now let's get back to the interview with me and director David Winters. So I, ha I have to ask you about this picture I found on the internet with uh, uh, you and Paul Newman uh, sitting here. And I have to say that jacket is, is amazing. But tell us a little bit about what was going on here. Well, I was making a, uh, <clears throat> a movie with Paul Newman, a racing movie called Once Upon a Wheel. Yep. Uh, and during the movie, I was filming Paul as a spectator in watching the races. You know, he's a huge fan of racing. And in fact, Paul and sure. I, we bought two racing cars together. And so he and I used to kind of, I used to rent a Learjet, and we'd fly into a city, and then we'd take a helicopter, and we'd land right in the pits. And everybody would go, 
Yeah. Because they were shocked. These are all drivers. Sure. You know, sure. drivers and, and, and grease monkeys, basically. Yeah, right. You know, guys that do the, uh, the mechanics and stuff. And so to see Paul Newman in the pits oh. was like, you know, blew everybody sure. away. So it was fun. We had a great time, actually. Well, and I'll tell you, I, I'm an old movie buff myself, and when I think back to some of the greats, Paul Newman is certainly one that comes to mind. Yes. Uh, in fact, recently I, I watched for probably the tenth time uh, somebody up there likes me with him and uh, Sal Mineo, which right. I know you guys were very close uh, friends. best friends uh, yes. years ago. In fact, yeah. I, I also had read that you had an incident with Sal Mineo's car back when you were maybe uh, filming West Side Story. Is that around the time? It was just when I came to Hollywood, yeah. Sal Mineo and I were, uh, first of all, let me say Paul was a real gentleman. Yeah, he's a thorough gentleman, an amazing guy. Um, and so is Joanna, his wife. Yes. Who just recently well, and married passed for away. Just, oh. Yes. Yeah, beautiful marriage, too. Yes. Beautiful. Um, anyhow, so Sal was, uh, Sal was my best friend in, in school. We went to large professional school, both being actors, he on Broadway and The King and I, and me doing my television, also Broadway. And when I went to Hollywood to do West Side Story, he said, come stay at my house, which is up in the Hollywood Hills. <laughs> right. So I stayed at his house, and I didn't have a car. My car was in New York. I had a little Corvette in New York. And he had a little Thunderbird. So I said, I just need to go do something. So he said, fine, take the car. So I'm going down the hill, and I try to put the brake on, and the brake doesn't work. And I crash through a wall, <laughs> and I'm hanging. My car, this, his car, is hanging by the back two wheels, and it's Ready going go like this. Cliff. You know, like, like I'm on a swing or something. And the woman who owns the house comes out and says, oh, you've ruined my garden. You've ruined my garden. I said, honey, I'm trying to live. You know, I, I may die I'm in this thing. Fire. Yeah, exactly. She was worried about a garden. Anyhow, everything was OK. Well, the problem was I had to call Sal and tell him I hey, smashed I up his car. car, of course. Yeah. Well, he was such a great <clears throat> talent. Obviously, he was worked wonderful. with so many icons, as we mentioned, Paul Newman. I know you've done work with you know, Kirk Douglas and Barbara Streisand. Is there a specific uh, story or moment that, that uh, you know, really is a highlight for you or something that you can recall to mind of just saying, like, you know, this is really even surreal for me? What's, give me a good Hollywood story. Jeez, I got so uh, many of them, I man. Can imagine. I got, I'm going to write a book. You can read my book. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, I tell you, you know, Barbara Streisand, I know since she's 18 years old. And Barbara was actually. Uh, an actress, but she couldn't get a job, so she became a singer. It's a true story. Fortunately for with all of us. With that voice, with yeah. that voice, can you imagine? <laughs> she wasn't actually planning on singing. Right. Uh. She was planning on being an actress, you know? So I love her dearly. She is the most humble human being. Uh, uh, you know something? I find that all the greats, all the greats that I've worked with are very, very humble. Yes. It's the people either coming up or... I don't know, that are kind of in the middle there. Different, different situation. Yeah, different. and what an actress. Fantastic, uh, well. and a director, too. Mm. Anna, I did A Star Is Born with her, you know? Yeah, okay. And uh, so yeah, I had the I know. pleasure. <laughs> I used to go to her house every day, and I'd sit in a chair similar to this, but all in white, because her whole house is white. And she'd stand there, and she'd sing to me all day long, and say, well, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And I used to say, thank you, God. <laughs> She's I think I did me. something very right. This yeah. was in, I don't know even what year it was, in the <laughs> 60s or something, 70s. She was paying me $12,500 a week to sit in a chair. And my job was to listen to Barbara Streisand oh my gosh. and tell her my thoughts, what I thought. So wow. what a job, you know? It's an incredible job. <clears throat> wow. Well, you've certainly lived an amazing life, mm. and you're still doing so. Uh, I have to ask, uh, I, I, many people on the show, they know I'm an avid Christopher Walken fan. Yes. And I know that uh, we were talking about earlier, and you have an actual Christopher Walken story. But would you mind relaying it real quick? Sure. Christopher and I and Elliot Gould were all in the same dance class, tap dance class. We all started as hoofers <laughs> when we were 13 years of age. So uh, I know Christopher from way, way back. But uh, I gave, he asked me if he could have my West Side Story jacket. So I gave it to him, and I've never gotten it back. Yeah. And I asked so he him for it back. Jacket. He borrowed my jacket. He yep. stole it, basically. Yep. Chris, please send back the jacket. You know, yeah. He's got my jacket. I'm <laughs> sure he still has it to this day. Uh, I'd love to get it back because, God, you know, it's 
just well, if I have uh, the pleasure of meeting him again, I'm going to ask please. him about it, and he'll probably say, like, it's my jacket. Tell Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, no, uh, he's a lovely guy. He's lovely. And he's a wonderful dancer. Oh. Oh, Chris is a great dancer. He was in Pennies from Heaven. He was yeah. terrific in that movie. Yeah, Chris is an extremely talented gentleman. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, briefly, what you're doing now. I know that um, you're still out there doing, uh, you know, a million miles an hour. You're still putting out these incredible bodies of work, but you're working on something very special right now. This is very special to me. It's called East Side Story. East Side Story actually was the original name of the movie that many people have seen, the 110 Academy Awards, called West Side Story. Um, East Side Story is based on Romeo and Juliet. Mm -hmm. It's based on lovers from different backgrounds. And the one thing that they have in common is dance in my movie. Right. And that's what, that's what brings them together. That's what keeps them together. And uh, I have, I'm using all the dancers in my movie are winners and runner-ups from the TV show So You Think You Can Dance. Wow. Yeah. And they're fantastic dancers. These kids are wonderful, amazing, amazing dancers. My choreographer is also one of them. <clears throat> so I have nine kids in my movie, all fantastic dancers and wonderful actors and actresses too, by the way. Uh, they're terrific in the picture. And we're shooting right now. We shot for seven weeks. We have two more weeks of shooting. And we're also editing the picture at the same time. Oh. The picture will be finished probably November. And uh, I hope everybody goes and sees it. It's and called East Side Story. East Side Story, everybody. And actually, the anniversary for uh, West Side Story, is it the 50th, 50th anniversary? 50th anniversary. Was so actually, I think, last year. Wow. Yeah. And we also have four Grammy Award winning writers who've written the soundtrack to our our picture, uh, including one, David Foster, who just got a star on the, uh, he has 16 Grammys, 48 47 or 48 nominations, wow. three Academy Award nominations, and he's won the Emmy and the Golden Globe. Well, I so can we see... have an incredible amount of talent in this picture. Well, and all that's not by accident. I can see why all these great people still want to come together and have a chance to, to work with you. Thank and you. learn from you and we're certainly excited to see uh, East Side Story coming out next year yes and I know I'll be one of the first ones to pick up a ticket and uh, David it's such a pleasure sitting thank with you, you. Thank this you is so a real much, treat Dan. for me I, I me love too, Hollywood I love thank you. real dialogue and real acting and certainly you you've done it all and you've had an amazing career and we wish you the best moving forward thank you thank you so much nice to be here well thank you very much that's our show we're out of time and um, we want to give a special thanks to uh, David Winners And um, also, don't forget to get involved in your local community and be forgiving of others. Good night, everybody.